Sing with me. 
Continuing our series based on James Brian Smith's book, The Good and Beautiful God. And this message is about a God who is self-sacrificing. At the heart of the universe is this one principle. Self-sacrifice is the highest act. If you want to know what God is like, if you want a way to share with people uh, what God is like, take a closer look at Christmas and Easter the nativity, and the cross. Christmas is the retelling year after year of God, the maker of the universe, the one who holds the galaxies in the palm of his hand. This God was born of a virgin, born into humble circumstances. Jesus did not regard equality with God something to be grasped, but he emptied himself. He became a man, a servant, obedient to the Father, even to the point of death on the cross. That is sacrifice. This, of course, is completely upside down from the world's notion of power and prestige. Jesus had all the power, all the comfort, all, and glory of heaven, and he laid it all aside in order to come to earth and to serve us, to save us, to rescue us. There's a scene from the movie Princess Bride when the, in the fire swamp, Princess Buttercup disappears into quicksand. Wesley grabs a vine and dives in after her. After a long, tense pause and the presence of a rodent of unusual size, she climbs on his back and he pulls her to safety. You and I have fallen into the quicksand of our own sin. Completely help us to save ourselves. And Jesus dove in after us at the cross and he continues to dive in after us when we are sinking down fast in sin and despair. We need to hold on to him as he pulls us to safety. Easter, Jesus came to earth to show us what God is like. Heals the sick, has compassion on outcasts and scoundrels. Then uh, 
gave his life on the cross, offered a perfect sacrifice on our behalf so that as we believe and trust in him, we are raised to new life now and forever. He didn't have to die. He chose to die. A sacrifice had to be given. A price had to be paid for us. So God the Father sent his son to die for us, to pay our debt so that we can live now and eternally. So just imagine being invited to an expensive dinner served by a multi-billionaire, and as you get there, the host offers to wash your car. And while you wait, he even gets down on his hands and knees and he scrubs the wheels. It's hard to, hard to get places. And uh, then he brings you into the house to enjoy a meal that he has prepared all day for you. Seven course meal, finest foods in the world. Then when you try to pay him back somehow, he simply says, I just wanted to serve you and let you know that you are special. You are loved. This is what God is like. It's what he's done and continues to do, showering love and kindness on you and me. It's a great mystery. A kernel of wheat, a seed, must be buried and die in order to be raised to new life. John 12 we read that Jesus had been growing in popularity because of miracles he was performing. Crowds were coming to see him, hear his teaching, and hope for a miracle. And the Pharisees, the Jewish religious leaders, were concerned that they could not silence him. Some Greeks, some non-Jewish outsiders, came to the disciples and requested to see Jesus. When Jesus heard about this. He tells his disciples, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. He knew that his time to be arrested, tortured, and killed had come. And this is what he says to them. John 12, verse 24. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Jesus had to die in order to be raised to life. As we follow Jesus, this self-sacrificing God-man, we too are invited to a life of self-sacrifice, a crucified life. We become the seeds produced by Jesus' death. Galatians 2, Apostle Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me, and gave himself for me. One of the greatest gifts that God gives us is that we offer others forgiveness. God at the cross offered the sacrifice that makes forgiveness of my sins possible. And if you've been forgiven, then you can now forgive others. Quoting James Bryan Smith, forgiving someone makes us appear weak and vulnerable but it actually reveals strength and power. When victims forgive, they become victors, not over others, but for others. Our weakness prevents us from being able to forgive. Our fear keeps us from surrender and sacrifice. But people in whom Christ dwells learn to live and to give as Jesus did. Jesus is not merely a model to emulate or imitate. He is the source of strength to rely upon. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Do you have a relationship right now that's strained? Is there someone, when you think about them, you just start to grind your teeth? It may be that you need to forgive them. Ask God to help you. Realize that forgiveness does not always involve reconciliation. A person may just be too toxic or dangerous to be around, or it may be someone uh, you no longer are in contact with. They may even be um, in heaven. They, they might not be living. And uh, so you still need to forgive them. Forgiveness is letting go of your right to get even with them. You may have heard the phrase, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Unforgiveness poisons us with anger, bitterness, and resentment while the person we refuse to forgive lives happily on. Forgiveness is handing them over to the Lord. I want you to try this. Write down the person's name 
or initials if you want, and what the offense is. Ask the Lord to meet, uh, meet with you as you do this, and when you're ready, tear up the paper into small pieces, throw them away, and say out loud, in Jesus' name and because of the cross, fill in their name, speak to them, I forgive you, and I place you into God's hands. And Lord, give me grace to continue to bring them back to you. That way, when you're tempted to rehearse hatred towards this person, remind yourself, no, I forgave them. They are in God's hands now. And it's going to be a process. When we are in Christ, we are attached to him. His love becomes our love. His life becomes our life. Holy Spirit dwells in us, empowers us to live sacrificially, to forgive others, to love the unlovely. It's a full, abundant, upside down from the world life. God bless you these days to walk with Jesus and live his self-sacrificing life. Amen. Mm -hmm.